back in December, the Georgia Tech game, um, when you guys lost, I remember you said that at the time, somehow, some way, I don't have the ability at this point in time to affect my players to make sure that we're in a better place mentally and physically and to play the kind of basketball we need to play. Mm -hmm. uh, how do you think back on that moment now? And do you feel like there's been growth? Was there a change in that area of, of being able to affect the players that you felt like you couldn't back in December? <clears throat> um, the coaches go through... Um periods in their careers or during seasons when, um, you know, they feel like it's out of, out of your control, you know, that you don't have the ability to uh, affect the changes that you want to affect. And sometimes it has to do with who the players are and what the circumstances are, who's healthy, who's not, whether they're a mature team or immature team, whether, um, you know, you've handled things the right way all along. And so a lot of things go into it. And, um, you know, I don't, I don't think anybody was in a really good state of mind going into that Georgia Tech game. And um, I, th I think not having, not having Paige was just part of it, you know. Um, this team needed <clears throat> a lot of growing up to do, you know. Um, and I, obviously, I think they have, or we wouldn't be playing tomorrow night. Um, if we had stayed the same, if we were the same team that mentally and physically that we were back then, I don't, I don't think we'd still be playing. So, and even yesterday, there was a growing up moment at halftime in the locker room that that took place. So, it's never, it's never ending. It's never ending. It's, there'll be something tomorrow. I mean, I remember the championship game here when we played in, in uh, 95 when Rebecca Lobo became Rebecca Lobo the last 15 minutes of the second half. Before that, I was constantly like, you know, if she doesn't do something soon, you know, we're, we're going to lose. It can't just be. And she took over the game. And it took her that long to finally see the light. And when she saw it, so you, who knows? But that particular time was not a good time for me against Georgia Tech. Coaching against Dawn tomorrow, what's it going to be like for you um, personally, tactically, as it relates to their defense and the Leah? And also knowing that both of you have never lost a championship game before. It's a lot more for you than her, obviously, but she's undefeated in finals too so far. <clears throat> Um, I don't, I don't think, um, I don't think I've won one national championship and I don't think Dawn's going to win any either. I think her team has a great chance to win a national championship. I think my team has a chance to win a national championship, but in terms of me personally or Dawn personally, I don't think either of us. At least I don't. I don't want to speak for Dawn, but I feel like once this game starts, once you get the tip off, uh, you kind of relinquish about 80% of the control to the players. And they now have the ability to win it or they don't. And you can coach the best game of your life and lose. You can make the most mistakes you've ever made coaching a game, your team will find a way to win. So, um, you know, I, I, I've been in this situation a lot against a lot of coaches and I've taken the same approach with every single one. You know, it's not about them. It's not about me. You know, it's always, it's UConn versus South Carolina. You and South Carolina have played before. I'm just curious your thoughts on Leah Boston and kind of what the, without giving away too much, the game plan to you know, try to contain her will be. Um, you know, I don't think it's, I don't think it's a stretch to say that she might be the hardest person in America to guard. 
she scores if there's one, two, three, four people on her, it doesn't matter. She's able to carve out the space she wants. She gets the ball in the rim whenever she wants. She rebounds whichever ball she goes after. She just has a knack. And, um, and I think when you can anchor your team with that, then, you know, you can go into every game as a coach pretty confident that you might not have other pieces working that day, but you got that piece working. And that's the most important. I think she's the most important person in the country in terms of what she does for her team. How do we guard her? I'm open for our suggestions. The clutch free throw shooting. I mean, the other night you guys think we're 16 of 18 and the end of the third quarter all the way through the fourth. NC State, you obviously hit a bunch down the road. I remember you saying the other day, you know, I have kids that want the ball at the right time to make the free throws, including a freshman in AZ. So just what is it about late game situations that you guys seem to hit the free throws and you need them to? The second part is just, you mentioned the, the approach, you use the same approach for all these Final Four or championship games. No one else has gone 11 and 0 in any sport in the title games, maybe Michael Jordan, but what is this approach that seems to work every single time you've been in the spot? I think for me, the approach that's worked the best is make sure you bring the best team. So I would venture to say that all 11 times that we've won, um, maybe there was one time, but I don't think we surprised anybody by winning we had the best team we had the best team all year we had you know we had the best talented players we played harder than everybody we were we just better than everybody <clears throat> the 10 times we lost sometimes we had the best team and didn't win sometimes we didn't have the best team and didn't win but one thing was for sure every time we did win we had the best team and we played great that particular night. Um, can that happen again Monday night? I don't think when we got on the plane to come out here, anybody in America thought we were the best team coming out here. So that's probably not the case this year. But you don't have to be the best team for a long time. You just have to be the best team for 40 minutes or play best for 40 minutes. As far as the free throw shooting is concerned, I'm as shocked as anybody that they're going in. Because all year long, we have not been a good free throw shooting team. Um, and then there are times when we had them. And I think our free throw shooting is exactly like our team. When we're good, we're really, really good. Like when we're, we're, good, we're good, we're making every free throw, right? When we're not good, it's not fun to watch. So Monday night, hey, I hope it comes down to free throws. And then we take our chances. If we don't get a chance to shoot big free throws Monday night, <laughs> that means we're in deep doo-doo, right? <laughs> that means the game's already over. I thought that I had the ability to bring any kid into my program make them into exactly what I wanted them to be. And as each year has gone by, I've started to see the, the fallacy in that. Um, not that I've not still tried to do that, but I think this year more than any other year, it's, yeah, I think it's hit me more than ever before that you really can't change people that don't want to change. And those that do, you're going to have a huge impact on them. You can't change the team that's in front of you. No matter how much you try, sometimes you just can't. And I used to get real frustrated at, why can't I change this? And because of circumstances, I think this year I've more times just throwing my hands up and said, it is what it is and let's deal with it and let's move on and see what happens. And 
<clears throat> hasn't made me any less neurotic or anything like that or, you know, paranoid about losing. Um, I still have my assistants going, you know, we're doing a lot of really good things. And I'm like, yeah, name one. Because I refuse to see the good things that we're doing. Because it's almost like I already know what they are. I always feel like my job as a coach is to only see the things that could help us lose. So if every single day I'm attacking those things that can help us lose, I, I don't have it in me to see the 10 things we're doing that are great that are helping us win. All I care about is if I don't fix these things, we're going to lose. That's a lousy way to live too, man. <laughs> man, that's a lousy way to live. But it works for me. Wouldn't work for somebody else, I don't think.